Hello everybody, welcome back to the Free Skate. My name is Ryan, this is my imaginary friend Jesse. Hi Jesse, how are you doing? Just kidding, he's downstairs watching his hockey game. Um, which is clearly more important than this, so I'm just gonna get this out before NHK starts. It's a wonderful night here in uh, sunny Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Just kidding, it's a complete winter storm. It's a complete mess outside. It's our first winter storm of the year and it's not very pretty. Uh, Jesse's dad lives a little bit north, probably about an hour and a half north of us, and he has no power. He's had no power for like going on eight hours already, and they said it might not even be on tomorrow, so I don't know. We told him to drive here earlier when the bros weren't as bad, but never going to get here now. Anyways, enough of that gabbing. Um, let's recap the Grand Prix of Italy. Um, I'm so sad for them that they couldn't have a full arena because I think that was a wonderful uh, event to watch. Um, we had we had a lot of great, great skates, particularly I thought the men's short program was phenomenal. They all came out to play. Boy and Jin, great comeback um, that fell short. <laughs> uh, he was leading after the short program and as you guys know, he just did not get it off in the free skate. And uh, he ended up in seventh place, I believe it was. Poor guy. Um, so we had Boeing Jin first after the short. Um, Daniel Grassel was an amazing second place. What an event for him, you guys. I I actually thought he got shortchanged in the free skate. I actually think he should have been second, um, to be quite honest with you. Um, he had a, quite a few calls of uh, questionable rotations, uh, the, the quarter rotations, which I guess maybe took his uh, GOE down a bit in the free skate. And uh, Mikhail Koliada uh, beat him by a few points. But I I personally think Daniel Grassel should have nabbed that silver medal. He's just skated so good. Um, and at home, too. I mean, realistically, that's not really going to happen. Uh, Grand Prix doesn't go to Italy. So uh, this one took place of Cup of China. Um I mean, maybe sometime in the future we'll see a Grand Prix in Italy, but uh, not not for now. So it was one of those rare opportunities where the Italian skaters actually had chances to skate at, at home. And uh, good for him for actually winning a medal. He ended up third on the podium with that fantastic free skate that he had. I believe it was three quads he had. Um, it was just so much, so much fun to watch. Uh, Yuma Kagyama, almost unheard of, not even in the final flight after... Um, into, into the free skate ends up winning the event guys he went from 7th to 1st and won that's insane his short program I thought he took himself out of it I thought he was done I was like oh there's no way he's gonna even medal the guy won his free skate was 297 I believe wait is that right no 197 Sorry, not 297. You can't have 300 with one program. <laughs> 12 quads. I'm just kidding. Uh, that guy, I was so happy for him. Uh, Jun Wan Cha, you know what? Third in the short program. Fantastic, fantastic skate in the in the short program. And it just couldn't hold it together uh, in, the, in the free skate. Uh, so he was fifth overall. I believe he was sixth in, in the free skate. Um... Well, Mikhail Kolyada, kind of a so-so event for him. Um, he was fourth in the uh, fourth in the short, second in the long, uh, and second overall. Um, he definitely didn't skate to his best, but his, his two seventy-three was still a fairly good score. I thought this event was judged pretty well. Um, I don't have too many complaints about the judging in this event. Um, how did you guys find the judging? I want to know in your comments below. Let me know how you found the judging across all all disciplines. Uh, the only thing I would say is maybe, I don't know, the ice dance. I feel like Papadakis and Cicerone won by a little bit too much. I feel like that margin of victory was like a little excessive over Hubble and Donahue, but I mean... I don't know, Hubble and Donnie, who had a mistake too, so they had a, a lower score than normal. But anyway, so for the men's event, you guys, the winner, Yuga Kagiyama. Second place, Mikhail Kaliata. Third place, Daniel Grassel. Fourth place, how about Dennis, uh, Dennis Vasilivis from Latvia? It's been a while since he's performed well in two skates back-to-back, -back, and he put on a show for that crowd, and he really gives it the 
not gonna lie, his ponytail kind of bugs me. Like, wrap that stuff up. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it on him. Uh, but it's super entertaining. The guy's great skating skills. Uh, he really knows how to how to feel that that music out. So I'm sure his coach uh, Stefan Lambdil is super super proud of him. Um, I know Stefan actually had a comment uh, the other day about um, him being disappointed that uh, fig figure skating is now about how many quads you can do and it's kind of losing the art. I semi agree with that. Um, I just I kind of think that the ISC needs to revamp the uh, PCS scores and I feel like you have to kind of multiply the factor of PCS scores. And I don't know, there's got to be something more concrete than your opinion on on PCS because there is so many issues I see in, ju in just events with PCS scores across the board where you have one skater that skates their butt off and, and isn't a high rank skater but can absolutely skate better than the favorite skater to win and their PCS is so much lower. I just don't, I don't get it. Uh, but anyway, so, um, yeah, so Yuma, Mikhail, Daniel, Dennis, Junwan Cha, 5th, Kazuki Tomono, 6th, Boyang Jang, 7th, Dimitri Aliyev fell off the face of the planet, ninth. he did not skate good at all, 217, he'll be massively disappointed with, um, so he's gotta get back to, uh, figuring out, uh, his training, because you know what, uh, there's, there's a lot of good male skaters in Russia right now, Mikhail Kaliyev, uh, Makar Gnatov, um, uh, the, that young guy, um, I think he was in, in Skate Canada. I forget his his name, um, but Dennis or uh, uh, Dimitri is gonna have to find a whole new level because he does not look very good in its Olympic year. So he's really gonna have to watch that. So let's go to the women. Um, I think this whole event, to me myself personally, and it's kind of biased because I've been secretly rooting for her for years. Um, Leona Hendricks. Um, the Belgian beauty, 219, first in the free skate. I don't think, or sorry, first in the in the short program. I don't think anybody saw that coming, especially with my Satoko and Sherbrooke over there. We had Luna Hendricks leading after the short program. Uh, she was third in the free skate, 220, uh, 219 overall. Uh, Unbelievable. Again, I think she should have been maybe second, to be quite honest with you. But um, whatever, the, the judges had um, um, Mi Miala, M Mila, is it Mila? Um, hold on, I gotta look at this name here. M Maya, Maya, I think it's Maya. Maya Kromek. Guys, I don't even know who that is. I'm not gonna lie, is that bad of me? There's so many Russian girls coming up, I don't know who's who anymore. I can't, I can't keep track. Because I get a favorite, and then they're injured, and then they're gone, and then somebody else comes up, and then, I, I don't know, I, I can't do it. But I was very, very impressed with Maya Kromick, to be quite honest with you. I think she's a brilliant skater. She's got gorgeous jumps. Um, so for her second place overall, I'm not, not, not going to say it's undeserved. I think I kind of biasly wanted Luna to get that placing, but I mean, I'm not going to complain. She got her first ever Grand Prix medal, so that was awesome. And uh, Anna Sherbakova, 236 overall. Third in the short, first in the free, and ends up uh, winning that whole event. Um, I want to ask you guys about uh, the women and quads. Jesse has an opinion about um, him thinking that if you can do a quad, they should be included in the short program for women. What's your opinion on that? Should women be allowed to do quads in the short program or not? And why? I want to know. I want to know a detailed answer. What is your opinion, and why is that opinion? So please post that comment below because I'm very, very curious. Uh, and we also had so uh, fourth and fifth Maya Satoko brilliant skates both japanese lady laid it down and they still didn't make the podium how do you skate like that and still not make the podium crazy i think uh Mai's pcs is shockingly low especially when it's very very similar to trusova's i don't think they're even close to skating the same like skating skills wise transitions and stuff in my opinion, is so much stronger with my skating. Um, but can, uh, going from uh, Trusova's last event to Mai's, uh, both events, um, she's been lower or like one point above like in that area, so they're basically kind of tied, and I completely disagree with that. Um, so, I mean, 
What do you guys think of that? I want to know your opinions on PCS as well. So we have... That was the ladies. Uh, I'm not really going to touch on pairs too much, to be honest with you. Except for it's really, really great to see um, Sui and Han back. Uh, because they're, like, just so good. But you know who I'm missing? I'm actually missing the German pair team. The one, uh, uh, Subchenko and Masat. Oh, man, I really wish they would have continued skating because they're just, they were so, so good. I had the pleasure of seeing them live at Skate Canada in 2017 in Regina. And that was awesome because they're just uh, live. They, they impress you as much live than than on TV, it's, it's, it's crazy. I'm gonna skip to Ice Dance because we're gonna talk a little bit about um, Caroline Green and Michael Parsons. They finished fifth for the United States. So they only had 178 overall, but they're pretty young. Um, Michael used to skate with his sister and now is paired with Caroline Green. Uh, they're really, really nice skaters. Um, I think they're gonna come along really really well for the u.s in their next olympic cycle i think they're going to build to gaining that olympic spot in 2020 2026 i guess right 2026 olympics i feel like uh they're they're going to be really strong they have really nice lines they have really good speed they're very innovative lifts um i think they just really mesh well together um i think they're a little bit underscored as well as you know who's underscored too who wasn't here is the the canadian team um uh la joy and, and laga i think they are fantastic i really get tess and scott vibes off them um and i feel like the judges are underscoring them quite a bit um particularly in in pcs uh, but they weren't at this event, so we're not going to really get get into them. Uh, Stepanov and Buchan, third place. Uh, third in both segments. Uh, I really, really, really love their twizzles. I think they're so good at them. Um, the speed difference in between them and first place, Papadakis and Cicerone, is ridiculous. It's not even close. That's the one thing. It's really, really neat to see Papadakis and Cicerone in an event and you compare them to others because you can really see the giant difference. Um, I don't think there's a massive, massive difference between Hubble and Donahue and Papadakis and Cicerone, but I think there's quite a bit of a drop-off between Stepanov and Buchan. And then you can tell Hubble and Donahue and then Papadakis and, and, and Cicerone. Um... Papadakis and Cicerones, they're, they're just so... They have such power on the ice. They just, they just glide through the program that's so effortless. And they look really, really, really strong this year. Uh, what's an interesting fact, so far the Canadian dance team, uh, Piper and Paul, have the second highest score this year in the Grand Prix events next to Papadakis and Cicerone. I believe they got two... 10 in overall in Skate Canada, I believe. So it'll be really interesting to see what their next Grand Prix uh, score is if they skate uh, really, really well to get those kind of score comparisons because Madison Hubble and Zachary Donnie only got 207 here. Um, I know different judges, uh, different panels judge differently and whatever, but I found that a little bit interesting. I was a little bit surprised when I saw Piper and Paul uh, had a, as a second place scoring this year. So I think they have maybe, they got a real good chance to nab a silver medal at this year's Olympics, which would be their absolute dream to do and would make Canada as a whole so, so proud uh, to, you know, be in the shadow of Tessa and Scott their whole lives and come out as Canada's leading dance team and then come back at an Olympics and win a medal. Oh my God, that would be absolutely amazing. And I love them. And can we just, can we talk about something? Can we talk about Paul and their costume um, at Skate Canada with their, um, with their rhythm dance? Because I didn't do Skate Canada video, so I just need to, to mention, you guys, his butt, like Paul Poirier, oh my God. <laughs> Me and Jesse couldn't even stop looking at it. I was like, I tweeted Paul. I was like, like dumpy, like dump truck, amazing. <laughs> Anyways, um, I really, really like Papa Duck and Cicerone's uh, choreography at the beginning of their short dance. I think it's super cool with how they're with their arms and their body movements and they're all in unison and stuff like that. I think that's really, really cool. 
Um, but they got, you know what, 220. 220 points is really, really high. I don't think that's their highest they've got. I can't remember what the highest they've got is, but that's still, this year, it's the highest. And what I found, uh, too, with the Rhythm Dance this year between all the Grand Prix, um, I found this one's maybe marked a little bit easier, uh, was the key points. At least in Skate Canada, anyways. Uh, the, the, the key points are very, very tough to get this year. Very, very few teams have got guesses across all four key points in the Rhythm Dance, which, um, I, I mean, even, like, top, top teams, I think... I don't even know if Papa Dyson scissor on all yeses, to be quite honest with you. So it'll be really interesting to see how that goes on through the year. And uh, how the different panels of judges are going to score the key points in, in the rhythm dances. And who's going to actually get all the key points and who's not. So when you don't get all the key points, it drops you a level. I think 3 out of 4 is a less value than a 4 out of 4. And then 2 and then 1 out of 4 are considerably lower as well. Um... Yeah, so, you know what, you guys? Let me know how you like the event. Let me know if you guys think that if there are any other countries that should maybe host Grand Prix events. Should the International Skating Union keep events every year, like tennis does Grand Prix, um, Australian Open, US Open, a Grand Prix of whatever they, they do, um, Paris Open, etc., for tennis, should they keep doing that, or should Grand Prix switch every year? Maybe there's a few set places that it always is, and then, and then maybe there's one that there's a Grand Prix of whatever that changes every year. Because there is not a ton of events for countries that don't, I guess, normally host live events. So if you don't have a Grand Prix event, so if you're not in Russia, if you are not in Canada, if you are not in the United States, if you are not in Japan, France, am I missing one? Is that it? China? Well, this year wasn't China, it was Italy. Then you're not watching a Grand Prix event unless you host the Grand Prix final, which is who knows where that could be. Uh, European Championships, that's only going to be somewhere in Europe. Um, four continents are more typically in an Asian country than a North American country. So let me know what you think of that. And I want to know what you think of the PCS scores and if the ICU should start multiplying PCS scores maybe by a... Because I think it's a 1.2 now. If they go to maybe a 1.8 kind of factor, um, you're going to see scores change drastically for skaters that have good PCS and not like a Jason Brown massive massive beneficial factor for him but you also can't score Nathan Chen the same as Jason Brown in PCS kind of thing so I want to know what your opinion is on that and I want to know some ideas that you guys have for that Anyways, the next event up is NHK Trophy, and um, that is coming up this weekend, so we will see you for the NHK Trophy. Okay, you guys, stay warm up there if you're in a cold climate, and if you're in a warm climate, go swimming or something. I will see you guys later for NHK. Bye!